welcome to another edition of Book Lovers Alley, a place where lovers of words unite and hook up. And today we're going to be talking about something very special. It's a book, one of my favorite fantasy romance novels. It's called Stardust and it's written by Neil Gaiman. Um, for those of you who don't know Neil Gaiman's work, you probably don't understand how special this book is. Neil is known for having very dark stories. I know I know I kind of have a thing with dark stories, don't I? <laughs> but anyway, that aside, this is actually a fantastic read. I mean, this book you could read in like two to three days and you're done with it. In fact, two to three days is too much. It's fantasy, so it's actually very sweet. As in, you're smiling, you're happy, it has a happy ending, which is not typical of um, Neil. It's not like Neil doesn't have happy endings, but uh, the amount of horror that happened in between is amazing. Now, this book, let me tell you something fantastic about it. Um, it's the story of a guy named Tristan. He grew up all his life for 17 years feeling out of place. And then he has a girl he has a crush on that he wants to fall in love with. Um, well, I think she's Victoria also. And then suddenly, he saw when while he was trying to woo her, he saw his, his shooting star and then he was like, I will do anything for you, as in anything for your love. And the lady trying to dis discharge him sharply said, um, okay, if you can get me that star, you can get a kiss. I was like, wow, to just get that piece of rock, I would get a kiss. Hey, ginger. But here's what you don't know. There is a wall, a wall that divides where Tristan lives from where the star falls. Now, where the star falls is the beginning of a magical land of fairies where a lot of weird, strange, magical things happen, where you have witches and, and you know, strange things happen there. And then this, he's on the side of men. And then one day he's like talking, he's packing his load and planning to travel. And his father's like, where are you going? And all that. And he's like, oh, I want to go and get a star for a lady I love. And, you know, and his father's like, okay, you, have, you want to go across the wall? He was like, yes, and don't try and stop me. I know people don't go. Blah, blah, blah. The father and I said, okay, come, let's go and sit down and talk. And he went outside and talked, and the father said, okay, let me tell you something, Tristan. You know, I had you across the wall. You know, you came from across the wall. And he's like, what are you talking about? Are you not my father? I said, yes, I'm your father. But when I was younger, the father's name is Dustin. When I was younger, I met a lovely lady across the wall, and, you know, that's how we had you and everything. So if you are going to go there, she said, anytime you must cross over to come that way, take this stone. And then he gave her. Um, gave him a stone and everything so he's like okay so when you use it to cross the wall you'll be safe on the other side and so he walks over with that and then he crosses over and then he starts the world of adventure now here's the funny part when he finally finds the star it's not actually a star you everybody knows nowadays thanks to science that stars are actually born in rocks right he gets there and he finds a young damsel whose leg is wounded now her injury has another story in itself in that magical land, there's a king and he died and everything. And he's like, for he has seven sons, um, six sons. And it's like, okay, I cannot give it to the first one because I don't trust him. I cannot give it to this, the fourth one because he's too ambitious. I cannot, okay, in order to solve this problem and not offend anybody. Sons, I'm about to die. I have this little thing and I'm going to throw it. And whoever finds it, it's like a family pendant. Whoever finds it will become the king. And he flings it out the window. Now... That's what actually hit the star and got her to fall down, wounded. And so she and her, so that just starts a whole new journey. So from that end of the star, uh, they are looking for the star because they know that immediately it went out the window, it knocked the star down. So they are looking for the star so they can get their, their family emblem, which is the symbol of authority. And then those six boys start doing something crazy. They start killing each other off. Typical Neil. I mean... When I say death, I mean real death. Like someone pushes someone to their death, someone gives another one poison, you know, just they were killing each other. Now, while all that is happening, there is another set of persons. They are called the, li the Lilium. They are actually three witches. In Africa, we call them Arometa. They are actually three witches. And these three witches, they all want the star because it's the, it's the key to, the, um, to eternal youth. So they are all after the star and everything and, you know, they choose one amongst themselves who is the strongest, the most powerful and the um, most physically fit to go after the star. She takes a, a little trace of whatever they have left. That it, she eats the last bit of the star to become young and then she goes out to look for the witch and everything. So a lot of the, there's a lot of chance meetings. There's a lot of um, brushings with the witch. There's a lot of um, the star running away from Tristan. There's a lot of using of magical chains holding people down. And it's just a whole world of fantasy. You know, that's what we love about fantasy. It's nothing like the real world. It takes us out of our comfort zone. It just, it's just so exciting. You forget that you're actually alive in your own world. And then um, 
at the end of it, you know, he runs into another witch who is holding somebody else captive and that one helps him and just, just so many helping and so many giving. In fact, I don't want to spoil it for you by telling you everything, but I can promise you it is one good book to read, Stardust. I read the e-version, that's why I'm not holding a copy and saying, hey, it is the book. But you can get any copy, you can get a hard copy, you can get a soft copy, it, it, whichever one you choose to get, I promise you Stardust is a great read. I, in the year 2007, if I'm not mistaken, um, Hollywood decided to make a movie out of it. They, um, they featured the likes of Michelle Pfeiffer, Sienna Miller, um, Robert De Niro. You know, they brought in a lot of big names. But once again, books adapted into movies. They kind of touched it. I mean, there were some things that I loved about the book that were not in the movie. And, and that's why I always advise you, if there is a movie from a book, please read the book. Because, of course, the directors have creative licenses, they have the right to change anything. But sometimes, as good as the movie is, sometimes it doesn't really beat the book. Because the book is always the standard. These days, there's so many series and everything coming out from books. So, this one, you need to read this book. I can promise you that. This book is fantastic. And one of the things I can tell you that they changed was the ending. Um, in the movie, there's this whole fight and stars are falling down, Brrr, everything's going crazy and they're like, oh, give me the heart! And, you know, but in the book, there's no drama, as in everything just happens so, so quietly and I will not say, I was, I was just about to give you a spoiler, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to give you a spoiler. So that's it on Stardust. Um, I think one of the things I say I love about the book is the innocence of the book. I mean, it's so cool. I mean one of the takeaways for me personally was sometimes to discover who you are you actually have to go out of your comfort zone you have to actually um explore worlds and and try things that are not um, normal to you uh, in in searching this new world tristan found himself so sometimes you find yourself when you step out from your comfort zone you find yourself when you do something that is unique and i think that's that's one important takeaway from this book it's fun it's sweet i encourage you to read it i mean why, why else do we read books if not to get lost in the worlds and just have the fun and the time of our lives so um Get the book. I promise you, you will love it. So thank you once again for being with me on this episode of The Book Lovers Ali. I remain Anne, and it's a pleasure being with you. Bye.